so of course we're going to do the who we are slide here. Um, Adam, why don't you go ahead? Sure. Introduce uh, yourself for the audience here. So I'm Adam Driscoll. I'm a Microsoft MVP. I've been an MVP for about seven years now. Um, mostly in the PowerShell space, that kind of thing. Um, recently started working at Selfbits probably like a year and a half ago. I'm an architect for uh, one of our uh, defense products. Um, but I maintain a lot of open source software. I write a lot of PowerShell scripts and that kind of thing. Yeah, and uh, my name is Lee Berg. Um, I, well, was an MVP up until just a couple months ago. Uh, I'm a technical product manager at StealthBit, so Adam and I are actually on the same team. Uh, speak at a number of conferences. I've been with StealthBits for maybe about 10 months now. Uh, before I was in the data center management side of the house, but now I'm more on the security side. Uh, building security products with Adam, and uh, because uh, one of our directors is in the back, uh, Stealth Bits, we're a cybersecurity company, and we have a booth over there, so uh, we might throw some hints here and there about what we do, but our products are not the focus of the session, but we do some cool stuff, so if you happen to have some time, come check us out at the booth today. Certainly, if you have any questions that don't get answered in the session, or if you have any ideas, swing by. We'd be happy to talk. So... Mini cats for the everyman. What is this all about? Uh, so when Adam and I were putting the session together, we, we wanted to do a session that had kind of a wide-reaching audience. So um, I assume probably everyone in here has heard of Mini cats at some point. Um, you can't really get anywhere without hearing about it. Certainly, Who has actually used it? Yeah, actually used it. Yeah. Okay. You know, played around with the command line a little bit. Maybe you've been in there. It's changed a lot of things. Um, and it can certainly do a lot of things. So there's really two parts to this session. We're going to start off just talking a little bit about Mimikatz, just so you know we're all on the same page. Um, and then we're going to show you some really cool things. Adam and I have actually uh, built some things specifically for this session that we think is really going to help uh, really anyone in the audience here out today. Um, and again, getting back to the core of this whole presentation is Mimikatz can be pretty hard to get started. There's a lot to it. It's got a syntax language, there's a lot you need to know, and that's even on top of just knowing how all the technology works and things like that. So we're showing and telling Mimikatz, and like I already teased, where we have a little solution that we think is going to help the so-called everyman, uh, but if you're actually really familiar with Mimikatz and you've used it a lot, either red team, blue team, whatever it is you use it for, um, we think you'll find some interest in this as well. So, Mimikatz. Uh, if, you're, if you've never heard of this, actually, I think it's pronounced Mimi Cats. I've been saying Mimi Cats. I think that's wrong. But you can find it out on GitHub. So it is open source, Creative Commons source. It's something you can go out and try for free. You would get it the same place any security professional would get this. Uh, and these days, we like to say it's really the go to tool. If you're a blue teamer, a red teamer, you've heard of it, you've probably used it, you've been around the block with it. Uh, favorite quote. Uh, the author, author uh, Benjamin Delpy, he's uh, an interesting character for sure. Love that guy. He's got a great Twitter account too. Uh, and his whole explanation for the tool is, hey, this was something I wrote for fun. I wanted to learn C, do some experiments with Windows security, and occasionally troll some people at Microsoft. But we all like to do that from time <laughs> to time. Uh, and it's, it's changed the world, right? So I've mentioned a couple times uh, it's used everywhere. I'm sure, like we said, everyone here has probably at least heard of it. Um, and that really does mean something. So for a tool to come out from the community to kind of make this huge wide reach, it's being used everywhere. Um, it's many, many fans of the tool and many people who uh, are trying to protect themselves against it. So what we're going to do in just a minute is we're just going to get in there with Mimikatz. We're going to do some basic demos, play around with it a little bit. Um, and then as the presentation goes on, we're going to get more and more advanced and show you some solutions. Uh, but before we do that, uh, because this is for the everyman, if maybe you've heard of it, you've looked at it once or twice, there's the whole classic use case of Mimikatz. And that's the idea that when I'm a user, I log into my machine, I log into a workstation. What happens is my credentials or series of credentials, a number of different objects are actually getting passed into LSAS. So basically my credentials in one form or another are going into memory and Mimikatz is really one of these tools that we can use to actually extract that information, right? So of course, Mimikatz is one of these types of tools. There's many other processes, there's many techniques, but more or less, I feel like this is the simplest way that we could put this together. 
Um, so now what we're going to do, we've talked a little bit about Mimikatz, just give the extreme basics. We're going to go into demo mode. So what Adam is going to do first is just show you how the heck do you find this thing, and then we're going to yep. have some fun. And first, I'm going to see if I can get out of PowerPoint. Nope. You're good over here. Oh, all right, I don't touch it. Okay. All right, sweet. So let's start. Uh, Mimikatz is up on GitHub, as uh, was mentioned. So if you go to, uh, whoops, if I could type. You go up to GitHub, which is actually really interesting about this, is like all the releases are uh, published in the release page here, so you can just download the zip. Um, that has your release that you want. And then what's really cool is all the source code is up here. So it's doing lots of really crazy low level hooking and that kind of thing. And like actually reading from memory and finding these structures in memory, that kind of stuff. So if you do want to see how that's done, it's all available out there. Um, sometimes this is the best place for the documentation too, is the source code. Yeah, so if, if, and pretty much if I Google Mimikatz, I'm pretty sure the actual GitHub repo is the first result. Uh -huh. And like Adam was saying, if it's your first time in this side of the house, just click on that little, look for that releases tab, and then here's the zip file, you're ready to go. Yep. So, all right, um, right now I'm on a Windows 10 machine. Um, it's domain joined. I'm connected to, I believe, my uh, ironman.com domain. Um, I'm running, yeah, like I said, Windows 10, a little bit older build, but um, most of the stuff will work on um, recent versions of Windows, that kind of thing. Um, I have Mimikatz installed uh, on the desktop. I just literally took that zip, and I have uh, the Mimikatz executable here. So Mimikatz is actually made up uh, into a couple different pieces. Mimikatz is the actual, like, most of the code. There's also a kernel driver that allows you to um, elevate processes as a system. You can run Mimikatz as a com object. You can actually, if you get invoke Mimikatz, you can run it in memory so you're not actually starting a process. We're kind of going to go into the basics. We're not going to get really into um, how to do all those things. You actually have to compile it a special way and that kind of thing to do that kind of stuff. But, um, oh, yeah. and, and you're doing everything in PowerShell here, but as a reminder, there's many different ways to run it. If you want to use a command line, I think if you just run yeah. the executable directly, it pops up yep. in the command so, line, you can start using it. Um, and as you mentioned, you can compile your own if you want to do that. And a lot of the people who, it, you know, in real life, right, in real environments, if this is really going to be used, it's not necessarily going to be something that came directly from GitHub. They're going to look at that code, compile right. their own stuff based on, you know, what. Yeah, you're likely, doing. I mean, you. It's pretty easy to find Mimikatz in your environment if it's happening because you see Mimikatz that XE start, that kind of thing. So yeah, it's, it's, um, it's more the concepts that it uh, allows you to find that um, yeah. are a little bit harder to detect. Mm -hmm. So I am in the Mimikatz REPL right now, so I can just type commands and get feedback about certain things. So if I want uh, Mimikatz to make me a coffee, it can do that. <laughs> you know, Mimikatz also can uh, provide the answer to the life. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> pretty cool. Um, but, <laughs> but it also has, you know, a little utility. As you can tell that he's kind of started playing with this and uh, building some tools to just kind of yeah, output so information. We're, we're, we'll talk a little bit about the history, but this has actually been around since 2007. Yeah. So there's a lot in here, and we're going to be showing a lot of what Mimikatz can do, but just know there's a lot. There's yeah. a lot of Easter eggs and cool stuff in there, right. too. So um, the help wiki online is a little, um, it's not totally complete, and it seems to change with every version, and it's not updated all the time. So uh, there is some help built in. Um, it's not really, really a flag that you type to actually see the help. Um, you have to pretty much type an incorrect flag in, and then it will give you help. Uh, so there, Mimikatz is uh, broken up into modules. So there's a bunch of different modules, and then those modules have commands. So this is a standard module that you see on the screen right now. Um, and that's where coffee and uh, answer come from, that kind of thing. Um, but if you want to um, actually see the modules uh, that come with Mimikatz, what you can do is you can type uh, this, which is like question, colon, colon, question. Um, what that does is it's going to look for the module question, which doesn't exist, so then it lists the modules. So you can see here, these are all the modules that um, come with Mimikatz. And, um, you know, there's some really cool stuff in here, and you've seen some of these things probably if you've ever heard of Mimikatz. LSA dump, um, you know, can hook and get credentials. It also does DC Shadow and DC Sync. Um, secure LSA is getting for like SAM 
uh, secrets and that kind of thing. Um, there's Kerberos modules for, um, you know, pass the um, token or pass the ticket, that kind of thing. Yep. Um, and there's the uh, all-powerful Minesweeper module that lets you uh, extract things out of the Minesweeper game. So that's pretty cool. But if you want to learn a little bit more about one of the modules, they actually have help themselves. So for example, if we did LSA dump, question mark, it doesn't know what that command is, so then it outputs uh, the commands that are available um, in the LSA dump module. So you can see here, these are some pretty interesting commands. DC Shadow is the new one that he just came out with um, earlier this year. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about that later, and I'll show a demonstration of that. Um, but it's kind of hard to detect, and it pretty much work, uses replication um, to work against your domain and you actually set things inside your domain um, from a workstation computer. Um, so let's actually try to like run one of these things. Um, so there's a couple interesting things um, that you can do when you're using Mimic Cats. Like for example, I'm running as Iron Man Administrator, it's the local administrator on this machine. Or actually it's the domain administrator, so my account, you know, my domain's already pwned, but um, so maybe Cats is capable of doing some pretty cool stuff. So like I said earlier, there is a filter driver, or a, not a filter, a kernel driver installed that allows you to elevate to system. So now what I could do is I can actually take this process up to system level just by typing a command. So that's kind of similar to what you would do with like a PS exec, you know, dash S. So it actually elevated this um, process to run as the NT authority So system. from a domain user up to system. Yep. So that requires having that kernel driver installed, and then it's capable of doing this. So what's kind of weird is that it will actually elevate uh, PowerShell and Mimikatz. So even if I were to exit Mimikatz and do a who am I, you can see I'm still running a system. So if you wanted to like revert your permissions, you actually have to get out of PowerShell and start it over again. So my... all right, so let's start Mimikatz up again. So some other things that are uh, interesting are like secure LSA, some of these commands. So um, you can list things like Kerberos credentials. So I think if I type this, it's not going to work right away. Oops, Kerberos. So this is actually getting all of the uh, Kerberos credentials out of memory. You can see that here's the actual machine password um, for my machine uh, right in memory, pulled out with uh, Mimikatz. Um, apparently, I have a Kerberos token for Frank right now, even though I, this is because I was messing with Moving Cats before and I did a golden ticket. So that's uh, actually a golden ticket, I think, sitting there. Right. So that's potentially, in this case, it's a golden ticket. But remember this whole idea of whenever anyone logs into yeah. that machine, you're getting something in memory. And that's really the whole concept I had on a slide earlier. It's a common technique is, you know, I'll get, you know, you know, oh person, whoever in the finance to log into their machine, cool. But maybe I'll try and get someone from the help desk, maybe with a higher level of credentials to connect to the machine too, because now I have, I can get their hashes out of memory potentially. Yep. So uh, one interesting thing is like, if you think about it, you could just do something like um, that on your domain controller by using something like PS exec, right? Um, but, uh, you know, like again, you know, this would be really obvious if this happened, right? It's like, oh man, that guy created a service, started the service, ran Mimikatz in my environment. I wonder what happened. So um, there are way, you know, this is probably the, the, the easiest way to detect, but um, you can also do it with PowerShell remoting because of invoke Mimikatz. That's uh, part of the PowerSploit module. It actually has a base64 encoded version of Mimikatz that allows you to load it directly in memory and you won't see that process start, that Mimikatz executable process start. And if you had PowerShell remoting on and you got to that domain controller and you ran something like this, you'd have the same output. So that's a lot harder to detect. Um, but Mimikatz also offers, um, oops, I need to exit because I think this is a remote Mimikatz. Yeah. Yep, I just ran PS exec. So what token is it using to get to the DC? Uh, it is using my current like administrator token. So I, I would need 
access to that DCE with PS Exec to be able to talk to the C share, create services, all that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah, so for the purposes of demonstration, you were already using yeah, I was just, an yeah. account that had it, but let's say you were able to get credentials from the source machine that did have the you know credentials to get to the domain controller, yeah. that would be the route, as opposed to just my kind of demo test user yeah. that we're showing here. So one newer feature of Mimikatz is actually uh, DC Sync. So I'll show you guys that. It's um, another way to kind of like you know, get exfiltrate credentials remotely from um, the domain controller. So uh, with this one, you want to do LSA dump um, DC sync. So uh, DC sync, if I could type. And then you, you specify a user. So what this does is it actually uh, uses uh, replication permissions to talk to the domain controller and request data about a particular user account. So if I were to do something like Frank, I have Frank in my environment. This actually went out and asked the DC to replicate that user's account information over to us. And you can see that I have the, um, the hash for that user now available um, here, which I could use for you know pass the hash, that kind of thing. Scarier yet, um, maybe I don't want to target just some random account, but what if I did you know, KRB TGT? Um, now I have access to the hash of that account. And once you have the hash of that account, you can create golden tickets. So that hash is used to pretty much encrypt that ticket, and you can use Mimikatz then to um, create a golden ticket for you based on that hash, and then pass it around your domain. So. Uh, that's what we're going to do. Um, this is a lot more typing, so I'm going to copy and paste it. Um, first, you want to elevate Mimikatz to um, privilege de debug level. You want to request the debug privilege, pretty much. Um, from there, to prove that there's nothing here, we're going to do a Kerberos purge. Kerberos list. So there's nothing there. And now this long command line is how you pretty much generate um, a golden ticket. So using the Kerberos golden um, command, uh, you specify the domain name, uh, the SID of the domain, which is this right here, the uh, RC4 um, NTLM hash, which is this value right here. And then you specify the like, properties of the, the, the ticket that you want. So I want to be, I want to be frank. Um, with an ID of 500, and then these are the groups that I want to be a part of. So I think, I don't remember if 500 is maybe a domain admin. No, 512 is. 512 is? Okay. Uh, I don't know if Purge is dead, but Purge didn't work. Purge, yeah. Oh, I ran it again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, just too many typos to deal with, right? <laughs> and, and kind of what Adam copy pasted here from Notepad, this, the idea is there's like a whole process to right. build this together. You could, using Mimikatz commands, using things like we saw earlier with the LDAP recon, like Bloodhound or something like that, we're going to take some time to actually, you, you would, it would take you a little while to build this out to understand the environment, right. but it's, it's information that can be potentially gained. Yeah. And, my big problem with Mimikatz has been like figuring this out, and then even then, it's never, I'm never going to remember that, right? I got to go to some blog post or like my notes or something yeah, like that. There's you know? there's some posts on adsecurity.org with a, a full yeah, almost right. reference. That's like the true documentation for the product. I'm sure many of us have been to that blog post. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's at a quarter million page views at this oh, point. Oh, that's so good. It's up there. All right, so now I just uh, created a golden ticket and inserted it into my session. The slash PP or PTT um, actually inserts it into the session. You can also export a golden ticket to a file and then import it later. So um, as you can see here, um, this has all the telltale signs of a golden ticket. Uh, it's encrypted with RC4. Uh, we can't encrypt it with you know, AES or whatever it is. Um, in this mechanism. So if they use this ticket in an environment, you can kind of like check for RC4 encryption, that kind of thing. Um, the other big telltale sign is that the expiration lifetime is 10 years. So this golden ticket could be used for 10 years without um, consequence, into, you know, unless you uh, realize what's happening. Yeah, and that's that's that one. That's a particularly interesting point because yeah, 10 years because we can. Great. In in, in real life, we're probably not going to just let it default to 10 years because right. it's so obvious. Yeah. So attacks in the wild you usually see are actually closer to the domain. Um, Default, default values, pretty much. So yeah, in this case, it's just that's what Mimikatz sets it to is ten years. So pretty obvious. All right. So 
that's kind of like Mimi Cats 101 sort of thing. These are the kind of things you can do with Mimi Cats. Um, and I think in our next demo, I'm going to show off some ways to make this a little bit easier so you don't have to try to memorize all these commands and that kind of thing. Yeah, so I mean, obviously, there's, there's a lot to Mimi Cats. Um, it's something that uh, there's, you have to know AD fundamentals, right? There's a lot there that you have to understand about Active Directory. There's a syntax language. There's the process that we have to go through for Mimikatz. Um, so we're, we're, we built something to maybe help you learn that or potentially help use it. We'll see. Um, just a couple quick notes here. Mimikatz history, it's always fun. We mentioned earlier the first version was 2007. Uh, it was in French only. It did have passed the hash. Um, 2007 apparently was one of those big years where hash the hash was a big topic. Uh, over the years, you know, we had more and more and more features added to it. Um, 2011, it hit 1.0, and it started to get a lot of attention. Um, this is when a lot of security bulletins and things like this, or support tickets, were being created just from being able to see what this tool can do. Growth, uh, and then some interesting points in 2017. You know. These are, you know, Mimikatz code is actually likely being used in some payloads like NotPetya, where it, it utilizes some of the components for lateral movement. Again, it's not like they just include the executable and go to town. No, they take that code and they use components of it as needed. Um, and then 2018, this year, you know, version two, we have DC Shadow, a lot of new things coming out, capabilities, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's definitely still uh, under active environment, and it's quite interesting. Final note, too. We talked a little bit about this, but some of that IRL in real life usage of Mimikatz, of course, rolling their own, uh, running the Mimikatz release executable. Typically, that's for learning, testing, things like that. Uh, Metasploit script. So, uh, Adam mentioned before, uh, you know, Metasploit has a number of basically modules where this is kind of built into the package. We have PowerSploit, which is a, a PowerShell framework for it. We'll be mentioning this a little bit in the future here in the session. Empire has Mimikatz built in, rolled in as well. Um, there's a lot of cool modules that will build off the top of that too. Um, and there's, there's a lot of PowerShell implementations that are out there as well because, of course, for typically Microsoft or especially Windows administrators, PowerShell is the tool of choice. So, hey Lee, yeah. I have a question. Have you ever been able to get Mimikatz to dump hashes without being an elevated local account? In other words, I think, I think we're probably on the same page there. I haven't been able to get it to work. I don't know if you, you've done any testing. No. Specifically. Yeah, usually I got to be a local elevated user. Yeah. Yeah. But I've, I've heard, I'm sure, I'm sure someone here has some ideas about that, though. I'm, I'm sure. Uh, so, challenges of Mimikatz. So, we talked about this a little bit already. So, obviously, you have to learn a syntax. So, when someone writes a tool for themselves originally and then they share it with the community, that's awesome. But there's obviously, you have to learn the syntax. You need to know those switches. Like Adam showed you, knowing which modules to run and all that, that can be a challenge, right? Uh, the output can be hard to parse. So uh, in many demos, you see people just dump into a text file and they go copy paste the hashes out of there. Um, sometimes you can grab it right from the terminal, but it outputs in a very specific format that can be hard to work with depending on what you're actually trying to do with it. Uh, no hand holding. So, you know, there's not documentation out there. There doesn't need to be. Uh, the guy who writes this, Mimikatz, is not his day job. Uh, he has a day job. He goes and does his own thing during the day. And this Eventually, is his it might be a day fun job. time project. Uh, so you're kind of your own support. There's obviously a lot of blogs and video and training out there to help you through this process. But generally, it's up to you to get that working. Um, and then finally, you know, when you're testing this locally uh, or working with this, it, uh, Mimikatz is going to be picked up by name, by signature, by any AV. If you throw it on Windows, Chrome even blocks it. It can be kind of difficult to actually play around with it, which, you know, it's, it's a good thing that that's there, but for just learning it, it can be a little bit difficult. So, what we're going to talk about now is part of the session, uh, Adam, like we said, being a PowerShell MVP, we want to take a, our attempt at building a PowerShell module for Mimikatz. And we are introducing posh cats, okay? <laughs> We're going with the cat theme. Um, so uh, about 20 minutes before the session started, we did actually publish this on the Stealth Bits GitHub page. 
Um, it's ready to use. Um, obviously, it's community supported. You don't have to buy anything. We don't try and sell you anything. You're not going to get a pop up about stealth, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. You can just have fun with it. Um, and certainly, uh, we want to try and make this like a community thing, contribute to the community. So, you know, if it if it's garbage, let us know. Cool, we tried. If you like it or I you find some it. interesting ideas, that's also really cool. So. We're going to jump into a demo with this in just a second. But I know what you guys are thinking, OK? Wait, you wrote another PowerShell module? Come on. Why would you do this? Why don't you use Power Invoke or PowerSploit or any of the other methods? Guys, it's fun. For us, it was a learning experience. And hey, if you don't like it, you can always write your own, right? Uh, <laughs> how did we do this? So I just want to roll through this before we actually show it off so we're set it up. Um, so Adam, why don't you tell us a little bit just about kind of the basic architecture of the module. So yeah, how did sure. you kind of build it? And we're going to talk about why we built it, but just what does it like look like? I mean, yeah, so mostly it's just PowerShell invoking Mimikatz in uh, particular ways. So um, we, it's broken into three parts. Uh, one is like commands that we kind of wrap the Mimikatz executable in. So you'll see things like you know, invoke DC shadow, that kind of stuff. And that'll have all the parameters that it would expect, so you don't have to go there and try to guess or like go find blog posts. It just auto completes that kind of stuff. Um, the other side of things uh, is like a kind of discovery of the actual Mimikatz modules and commands. So you, you saw that I was typing certain things that would pop up help. So we're actually using um, that functionality in Mimikatz with some uh, regex to actually output those uh, things as objects. So you could say, you know, get you know, MK module, it'll just list a bunch of modules. Um, and then finally, we've uh, introduced IntelliSense into Mimikatz. So you'll actually be able to have the Mimikatz executable on the command line, and then just tab complete your way through the actual Mimikatz execution. So you don't have to use the PowerShell command lines or anything like that. You can actually use the Mimikatz executable um, yep. with tab complete. Yeah, and some, some objectives that we kind of set out here is we didn't want to completely just wrap Mimikatz completely. So we didn't want to say, hey, use our module. You'll never have to use the executable again. That wasn't really the goal. We kind of wanted to kind of handle that in a bit more uh, yeah, soft, a more soft fashion there. Um, and really big thing for us was using this will actually help you learn it. So like Adam said, the autocomplete. So I don't remember if it's slash, pass, hash or PTH or PTT or whatever. Uh, maybe I just put the slash in there, I press T and I start hitting tab. Okay, I'm good, I got my command. Um, maybe I don't wanna have to go to adsecurity.org slash blog all the time to remember how to use this thing. Uh, and then finally, just some more usable output. So uh, if you've done any automation in PowerShell or if you played around with it, you know that outputting as objects and being able to parse that even be able to get a collection of objects and for each your way through them and do things with that output is super useful. So we wanted to have something like that too in the module. So like Adam could say, instead of having to, here's a big block of text, well, we're, you guys should see the regexes that we wrote for this thing, but it's gonna take those outputs, right, and actually turn them into nicely formatted PowerShell mo uh, objects that you can use. So we're gonna go ahead, and Adam is gonna show this in action. Um, again, you can get this on the, on the GitHub page that we have, but Adam is going to actually run through the module here. Um, and like we mentioned earlier in the presentation, while he gets set up, um, Adam is a lead architect at uh, StealthBits, so in his day job he's you know, building product full time, and this is something that we've put together in our free time, so Adam, take it away. All right, sweet. Um, so to get started, we can import our module, PoshCats. Um, so now that that's available, um, I have um, a bunch of different commands I can use. So if we go look at the module, whoops, posh kits. You can see these are the commands that we have so far. So um, convert from MK output will actually take Mimikatz output, and if you tell it what command you just ran, it will output the objects for you. So we've written the regex for some of the commands, not all of them, um, just some example kind of things. It's really easy to build on though. And then we have some kind of wrapper commands. So, you know, export Kerberos ticket, invoke DC shadow or DC sync. It's just commands that wrap the actual um, implementation or invoke of uh, Mimikatz itself. Um, there's a couple discovery commands in there. So you'll see um, get MK command uh, and get MK module. Those will actually return the Mimikatz modules um, 
and commands uh, for the version of MimiCast that you have running on your, your box. And then finally, we uh, overrode the tab expansion functionality, and that's how you get IntelliSense with MimiCats. So let's just kind of take a look at that. Uh, we'll run get mk uh, module. So this will actually go out. It ran MimiCats. It actually um, invoked that syntax that I showed you that will list the modules out. So now we have um, a name and description of all of the modules. And you'll see that these are actually um, you know, full objects. So it's a PS custom object that has uh, a name and description. So that means you get all the PowerShell goodness where you can like, you know, I want to just select the name so, off. That kind so of you're thing. not doing write host for each object, just write host, just right. dump it, but you're turning it into a PowerShell object. Yep. So we have access to all those cool things that we can do with PowerShell and the pipeline and all that kind of stuff. Um, similarly, uh, we have get command, which allows you to specify a module. So if I wanted to, um, you know, let's see what's a good one. Uh, LSA dump or something like that. You can see that now we have um, a list of all the commands for that particular um, module. And it scrapes out the description and all that kind of stuff and uh, allows you the ability to do that. So that's kind of cool. And what we've done with that then is kind of um, looped that into the, the IntelliSense um, and autocomplete stuff. So I'll show that in a little bit. Before that, we can show off some of the commands that we have. So before, you know, I was typing mimikatz and then I was doing a colon, colon, colon thing. And now we can do things like if I want to get um, the MKLSA SAM information, uh, usually what you have to run is like um, a mimikatz privilege debug, which would elevate your token. And then, um, then you could run the LSA dump SAM command to get that. When I run this now, what it actually does is it runs those commands, but then it also runs them through convert from Mimikatz, uh, and it will create this object. So you can see this didn't just output the text of Mimikatz, it actually took that text from Mimikatz and turned it into an object. So if I wanted to get the sys key um, for this particular domain, I could just do that. And now I have access to that particular property of that, that Mimikatz um, output. So uh, most of these are just, yeah, they're all regex, and we haven't wrapped all the commands yet, but uh, there's kind of a good pattern there. Mimikatz, actually, if you look at some of the output, um, it's pretty standard. Um, he does like a line by line, like colon separated thing. So if I were to show you that. What did I do wrong here? Oh, I'm in my elevator. But either way, um, most of the uh, commands are pretty well formatted, line by line sort of thing, so it makes the regex a little bit easier to actually do. All right. Um, one of the new commands in uh, Mimikatz 2.1.1, I think, or it was 2.1, was uh, invoke DC Shadow, or DC Shadow. So DC Shadow, what it does is it actually um, stands up a domain controller, or what looks like a domain controller, in, inside Mimikatz. And then uh, it adds your local uh, machine account to the domain as a domain co controller. Like if it's already part of the domain, it will just set the service principal name to an actual, you know, looks like a domain controller pretty much. So it registers that machine as a domain controller, and then it synchronizes data via replication over to the domain. So DC sync was the opposite. It would pull data back, and you didn't need to register as a domain controller or anything like that to do that. Um, but with DC Shadow, that's what it does. It stands up this thing, and push, you can push data into your, um, into your domain. So that's a little scary. It's funny, because if you go to, um, he actually has a website for it, I think dcshadow.com. And this is his tagline, is, you know, they told me I could be anything I wanted, so I became a domain controller. And then there's a really cool warning here. Be aware that pushing data using replication can brick your domain. So yeah. remember that. But I'm going to show you how uh, we kind of wrap that command um, to make it a little bit easier. So we have an invoke mk dc shadow uh, commandlet in here now. And if you look at the help for that, you can see that it has two parameter sets. One is the push command. So that's like the second half of doing this. Um, and the other half is um, actually invoking or starting up the, uh, the domain controller 
uh, to do the replication. So if we do an invoke mkdc shadow here, um, and then specify an object. So I have, I'll just show you guys in my domain. I have a user, his, uh, his name is Ted. I got Ted in here. So if I do an invoke um, mkdc shadow with an object of Ted, uh, the attribute of like given name, and then a value of some test value. Um, what it's going to actually do is you're going to see Mimikatz uh, pop up. And I don't know if you guys can read this very well, but um, I'm going to get a little bit bigger, see if that helps. Uh, we, it actually has started up this server, pretty much, um, where it is now ready to replicate to, um, to that. Uh, domain. And you'll notice that it has done a couple things. It has to raise your, um, your pretty much your process um, token up to NT authority system. And then uh, from there it starts this um, DC shadow server. So I actually need to start a new version of PowerShell if I want to uh, initiate the push. So you actually open up another uh, instance of PowerShell that isn't running as um, system, and then you can initiate the push. So hopefully that, uh, I was having this problem before. I'm not exactly sure why it's complaining, but um, it doesn't like the value that I'm providing to the domain. You can actually, um, if you ever have an error in uh, PowerShell, a little tidbit of knowledge, I guess. That component model, oop. That Win32 exception, and then you just pass that in, and you can see the encryption type requested is not supported by my KDC, so I don't, I don't know what it did. Yeah, but that, that's okay. So really, you you created this information, and then through replication, you push that to your domain. Mm -hmm. So if we hadn't been testing this and probably breaking our domain to some degree over the course of the day, <laughs> uh, what we would have seen is that value would have gone to that user because of that replication, that, yep. we, that fake, basically fake replication. That yep, exactly. Out. And when it's uh, stating that it's performing uh, registration and that kind of thing, that's where it's actually uh, adding the, this machine's account to the domain as a domain controller and that kind of thing. And then a second later, it removes that. Um, that machine's account from registration. So that's kind of a good way, a good indication that might, something might be going on if you're seeing domain controllers pop in and out of your environment every 30 seconds or something like that. Yeah. Do you have cache credentials on machines that have anything special or is this the default? This specific Windows 10? This is, yeah, default. default. Yeah, I haven't done anything. Should I put you on the spot and request something? Sure. Is there another person that has ever authenticated that machine? Another person that. So uh, I could log into someone else probably. And then my request would be log in and log out so that the cache cred will on the machine, then authenticate with that cache cred to do the explore or anything at all. Mm. Oh, is it possible to steal the cred off of the cache cred and um, authenticate with the user? Is that it should be possible, yeah. Especially if you're doing something with like, where we've seen it, where it really, really leaks creds like that, is like cred SSP and stuff like that, where you're actually passing a cred down to the box. Like in the case of you interactively logging in, I think you could see the cred, that cache cred in memory. You could try. How about we, let's finish up this demo, and then yeah, at the end, we can always can do that too. too. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, one. My favorite part of this whole thing was, okay, yeah, it's cool. We're wrapping commands. And like, if you go and look at our, like what the command looks like, um, you know, if we have like invoke mkdc shadow, and then we looked at uh, the definition of that, you can see like it's really simple. We're just calling mimikatz pretty much. So it's just kind of like lining that up, and you guys could go look in here and see like, okay, that's how you do it. I don't need to use this commandlet. I can just go and do that thing. Um, so that's kind of kind of cool, and it's kind of nice that it's all discoverable and stuff like that. But my favorite part was that we actually uh, integrated or in, developed some IntelliSense. So has anyone used Posh Git before or anything like that? It's like a PowerShell module for Git. So what it allows you to do is actually uh, tab complete Git commands. So you don't need like you know PowerShelly commands or anything like that. You just use Git the way you would expect, and then um, you get IntelliSense for it. So 
If I type Mimikatz on the command line now and I hit tab, what I'm actually going to see are the different modules that are available in the Mimikatz um, executable. So then if I were to select one of those and then uh, put two colons in, then I'll start getting the different um, commands that are available in that module. So forgive me because I forgot which yeah. command I was going to do. And this is an example of, you, you know, wrapping commands is fine. That, that's something that a lot of modules do. But this is a kind of the example for us, like a quality of life type thing that we wanted to build just because we're always uh, <laughs> forgetful of the specific command line arguments. Yeah. Okay. So don't get it. Hopefully it's not all messed up. Because I was going to show a specific one. And now I'm just trying to remember. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, duh. All right, so that's cool. Um, like we said before, there's like no discovery of the actual arguments that go to the commands unless you go and look at the source code up on GitHub. So what we started to add in here, again, this is like not totally complete, is the ability to actually tab clean arguments too. So if I did lsa dump um, dc sync, oh, really sync because it's easier. Um, and now if I hit this, I'm going to start getting the arguments too. So then um, that's kind of handy because then you can you know, just tab complete. Not only is this a good learning tool, but it's also a way to uh, avoid carpal tunnel a couple years earlier. <laughs> sure. Um, the other thing that we're uh, starting to integrate in, too, is like certain fields, like you can tab complete those, too. So for example, this user field, well, we need a user in my domain. So if I put like an A in here and I hit tab, it actually goes out to the main, does an LDAP filter on that domain, and then returns that user. So you can actually go out and then you know tab complete, like I have Frank or head in here, that kind of thing. So it's actually calling get AD user, going out, getting those list of users, and then uh, populating um, that field. So pretty neat. Um, so like I said, it's not totally complete yet. We still have, um, we oh, just so have a couple. Could you show the page out on, on GitHub? What's that? Could you show the page on, oh, yeah, yeah, on yeah, GitHub? Sure. Let's give people what it, you know, where they can find yeah. it. So poke around the code a little bit. Uh, yep, like we said, it's on stealth, but it's, um, can I make this bigger? Yeah. On our uh, GitHub repo, uh, the PowerShell module for uh, Mimikatz. Um, we have some examples of the stuff it can do. Uh, i got to update this GIF. It's wrong now. It doesn't do it the same way. Um, but yeah, some of the commands that are in there, um, how it converts things to PowerShell objects and stuff like that. And it'd be cool if we could you know, get some people using this. I'm going to be you know, contributing to this with some new yep. stuff um, and you know, new yep. commands and that kind of thing. So uh, yeah, I think uh, that pretty much does it for my demo. Um, okay. Yeah. And again, I think in the simplest terms, we should just be able to, if I actually wanted to run this, uh, in this case, the module itself just lives in the in the source folder, right. right? And then we just grab this, you import the PSD1 file here, and you're good to go. But like yeah. we said, I think we have some instructions. Probably. We don't. Uh, well. <laughs> we could, though. Um, one thing is we can't put this on the PowerShell gallery because they run a MSI over the top of every PowerShell script that goes up into the PowerShell gallery. So it'll reject this because it has the word Mimikatz in it. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we could try to like base64 encode it. Somehow. Yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, we do have some very simple getting started here. We'll probably tweak on this, especially if we see people having trouble with specific items and things like that. We can always uh, add on to that as we go. Yeah. So uh, that was Posh Cats in action. So just kind of rounding out our session here. I think you, you just, oh, there we go. Uh, we talked a little bit about some of the things it can do, what the capabilities are, some of our objectives for, and how you can actually go and get this thing. Um, some of our conclusions, you know, as we've been working through the session and learning about this, is Mimikatz is pretty fun. So certainly, we have this cool module. Well, we th I think it's cool. Um, <laughs> you can try it out yourself, but you know, definitely take Mimikatz for a spin, spin too. Um, we're not going to sit here and say the only way to run this is with a module. Um, I think there's a strong argument for saying, you know, figure out the fundamentals first before you try and make it easier for yourself with a script. Uh, but just know it's one of the tools out there that you can play around with. <clears throat> so like we say, once you're kind of set, you understand the basics, you can move on to some scripting, uh, maybe write your own scripts, kind of trying to sequence it. I'd be really interested to see what we could do with 
uh, the script. If I have these hashes and these pieces of information as a PowerShell object, now I'm going to go pass this on to some other uh, process, or I'm going to iterate through them and try different techniques and things like that. I think that would be really interesting uh, to do in PowerShell, of course. Uh, and then, of course, like Adam mentioned, we have it's on GitHub. Um, it's totally open. You can leave feedback, submit issues, do all that stuff. Um, it's something that uh, our employer supports, so um, certainly if there's issues on there, we'd be pretty responsive with that, and I think we could do some pretty cool things there. Uh, and closing out here, we might spin back for something in the Poshcash module here in just a bit, but of course, to get a hold of us, if you want to see what we're doing or what we're up to, uh, we have our, we're both on GitHub. Uh, of course, that Stealth Bits GitHub is where the uh, module that we showed you lives. Um, Adam does a lot of really cool stuff um, at night, so he has his own company with a lot of crazy PowerShell stuff. So if you're a PowerShell guy, check out poshtools.com. You'll probably really like that and appreciate what he's got. Um, otherwise, you can get us on Twitter. That's always a good place. We have blogs, GitHub, all that good stuff. So um, that's about it. So you know, at this point in presentations, we always like to open it up for you know Q&A. So let's do it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Too much mimic yet. That is a great stalling technique. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how do you bypass security guys when you're trying to download it? Oh, I, there, we have some I, practical tips for that. Yeah, all right. I'll show you the my What you do is you disable the fender. <laughs> You could do well, that. Chrome yeah, well, if you actually, I think Internet Chrome. Explorer. Yeah. <laughs> so I think if you actually, uh, that's a good question. I don't know how you disable it in Chrome. I haven't tried it. I Honestly, I pop open IE or I download it with yeah, a script right. or something. So that's my way, that has been my way around it. Yeah, essentially. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Like, really seeing, I think, Mimi Cats in like an actual environment somewhere is like probably very unlikely since it's like very obvious to find the actual thing running. So, right, but there's it's easy enough to uh, either write a script to disable. Maybe we could put that up in the repo. Hey, if you're trying yeah. to test it, you can add an exclusion for Mimikatz in Defender. It's kind of tricky to do. <laughs> yeah, you should just pull it for now. <laughs> Uh, so you can do that. Um, otherwise, um, you know, disabling Defender certainly helps too. Um, and it's easy enough to say, oh yeah, compile it yourself and name it something else and try doing it that way. But um, usually the simplest way is best, especially if you're just trying to learn this thing or play around with it a little bit. You don't want to have to go and you know, boot up Visual yeah. Studio. Because really even um, Defender will pick up on Invoke Mimikatz, the Base64 encoded version of it and everything like that, and it'll get rid of that too. So. When I first was working on this, I was just using Invoke Mimikatz and it would just like delete my script after a while. I was like, what are you doing? Why do you keep enabling yourself? Yep. So, yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, and if you guys have more questions, you want to stop by and play with some Mimikat stuff after this, I got a lab all set up and we can kind of play around. Yeah. All right. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks a lot, guys.